Hey, welcome to Broke World Entertainment, and this is going to be the review for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Full review, I'll start with non-spoilers, and then we'll get into spoilers. First things first, though, all the rumors you heard from Reddit were true. All of them. This movie is garbage. By the time you finish watching it, if you actually watch it and I advise you not to <laughs> you're going to be looking at Kingdom of the Crystal School and you're going to be saying welcome back all is forgiven because this thing is not and I mean not an Indiana Jones movie it, it, it's something parading as one but it is not an indie movie. So the story is that uh, he's going to be looking for the Dial of Destiny from Archimedes. The way it all comes about is we start off in the 1940s. I, I'm pretty sure it's meant to be the 40s. Could be the 50s. Or sorry, the 30s. Where he we have young de-aged Indiana Jones and he's searching for the spear that stabbed Christ and when he finds it it's a fake which he then finds out about the Dial of Destiny or part of it where our villain Voller has it or is getting it and we skip then straight to the 60s and he's in his apartment in his socks and his underwear and that's it and he's literally the grumpy old man the get off my lawn type of person because he gets woken by loud music to which he goes to the neighbours to tell them to keep it down yes he's become one of them he's retiring and then he's teaching a class and the class is completely disinterested with what he's talking about. Except one person. And one person has all the answers to every question he asks. Who's that one person? Yes, you've guessed it. It's Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Oh, she is terrible in this movie. And every bit as annoying as you may think she is. She also seems to be a bit of a jackal hide because she seems to flip on a dime. But she brings up the dial. She wants to get the dial to sell it on the black market and that's what she does. She sells antiquities on the black market. She makes people bid for them. Well, the Nazis... Yes, that's right. They are Nazis. Want to get the pieces of the dial. To go back in time. To kill Hitler. Like Voller wants to go back. Kill Hitler. To become the new Fuhrer. And not lose the war. Yeah. Every bit as dumb as it sounds. And they have basically the CIA working for them. <laughs> Which is just so stupid. So. That is basically. The premise of the movie. That is what it's about. And Indy of course kind of. Gets. He's almost tagged along. It, it's not really. His quest. Which just makes it even worse. So by the time you finished watching this movie. I was like. This thing. To start with, it's two and a half hours long. Far too long for an Indiana Jones movie. And you feel every bit of that time because it's boring as hell. And I really do mean that. It is boring. He is not Indiana Jones whatsoever in this movie. He just it's a grumpy old fart 
So in the end, it's like, how does it make you feel? By the time it ends, it's like, was that satisfying? Was that a true goodbye? I don't want to. It just makes you want to... So, overall, I have to go into the spoiler. So, the review for the non-spoiler part is basically this movie sucks. It's not an Indiana Jones movie. It, you can tell that they had no idea how to end the movie. The, the ending is... Oh, my Jesus. <laughs> it's... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's god awful. So what would I score this movie out of 10? I would give it an absolute zero. Yep. There is nothing redeemable about this. And I know a lot of people enjoyed the beginning of it. The first 20 minutes. When it's back in the past. I didn't. I thought it was stupid. There's even a moment... This isn't a spoiler, but he he needs to catch up to the train, so he goes to get a car. All the Nazis are around. You can see all the Nazis standing around. He walks over, knocks on the window. The dude rolls down the window, and he punches him, knocks him out. Opens the door, pulls him out, and drops him just on the ground. And then people walk up and get into the car it's like they don't notice the guy unconscious on the ground <laughs> oh yeah so yeah this movie nothing I give it nothing out of 10 don't waste your time with this <laughs> yeah welcome back kingdom of the crystal skull all is forgiven so with that, we're going to have to get into the spoilers because it gets worse. <laughs> it really gets worse. So here we go with spoilers in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So how Voller is still alive to be in the 60s it is a question that never gets answered because he's on the train now you've seen the train in the trailer the whole back in the past where the de-aged Harrison and all that crap <laughs> they're on top of the train there's Indy uh, a Nazi commander who uh, not Voller is his boss basically um, what's the other dude's name? The guy that Toby something plays. Uh, whatever his name is, Shaw something Shaw. Who kills that Nazi? Shaw shoots him. He fought. Or Indy kicks him off the train, but Voller comes up with a gun. Tells them to show them the dial. And you think Indy does. He throws him a bag. And he's about to shoot Indy. When a pole. Catches Voller in the head. And lobs him off the train. 
The train is going top speed. He takes this pole in the fucking face and survives. Not to mention he's just been thrown off the train. God knows where to. Ridiculous. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. The de-aging on Indy looks fine when he's not moving. When he's sitting down and stuff, it looks fine. Looks good, you know. But when he starts moving, it starts to look a bit wonky. All the backgrounds and stuff in this as well are really heavy CG. And you can tell. It looks terrible. You know, that's the one thing all the original indies had. Real locations. This does not. So, we got past the first uh, 20 minutes and then we're into the 60s. He wakes up. First thing he does is go down and knock on the neighbor's door because they're playing the music. Then he makes himself a coffee. Pours alcohol into the coffee. He's a bit of a dip so now because he has divorce papers. Miriam is leaving him. He goes to work. No one cares about his, what he does anymore. He's in New York, by the way. Pretty sure it's New York. Yeah. Uh, he's working at a university there and he's retiring. And they all give him a surprise leaving due. Even though they're only in the middle of the semester. It's not even at the end of it. Nearly. Okay. But the CIA seem to be watching them but it's not really well it is the CIA but they don't realise they're actually working for Voller the Nazis and you get some dumbass chase sequences but Helena is in the class and she follows him to the bar where he's drinking He's she starts talking to him he doesn't recognise her and she tells him who she is and then he's basically why do you you know what's your interest now and she said uh, I want to find the dial of destiny his her father's work and we get a couple of flashbacks with Indy and uh, Helena's dad what I cannot remember what his first name is and I don't care he was useless pointless this is apparently he was one of his best friends ever and we've never heard of him <laughs> okay but the the whole thing about the dial drove him mad basically you know consumed them uh, and he was obsessed with it thinking it was time travel and it is time travel so Indy takes Hannah to see it. Oh, by the way, when he threw the dial to Valor on the train, he didn't actually have the dial in the bag he threw to him. He still had it. So he has it in the lockup in the college. So he takes her to see it. Valor and all show up and they're shooting people left, right and center. The CIA bitch doesn't seem to care she's just kind of like what's going on Helena immediately betrays Indy by taking the uh, the dial and locking him in with the people trying to kill them and she runs off Indy escapes he ends up on the horse uh, Bright Holbrook's character ends up on a motorbike <laughs> this part right is so stupid so the 4th of July par I think it's the 4th of July parades are going on or maybe yeah I think it's the 4th of July or something else victory day or something so there's parades going on Indy gets a police horse he's trying to get the cops attention he takes the police horse, rides off, right, down the street. Bright Holbrook's character gets a police motorbike, rides after him. 
another one of the Nazi lads gets a car and drives out. And the fellow who gets the car, he, he's this fucking huge bloke. He must be about six foot, bleeding nine or something. Built like a shit brick house. <laughs> and they play that up a lot. Literally. It was like people bounce off him and he doesn't move. Bit ridiculous, but okay. There are the, the CIA woman who's a black woman. It, it, she just sees them all driving off. By the time Indian stuff get to where he's going, he's like he goes down into the subways on the horse. The guy drives the bike down and chases him. He can't get off the platform. So Indy has to escape. Indy gets to the next station. Gets off the horse. Hands the horse to a guy. And is like here mind my horse. He jumps on the train that's just pulled up. And as the doors are closing. The black CIA woman is there. She runs up to the door to try and catch him. And just misses because the door's closed. Is she the fucking Flash? How in the name of fuck did she manage to get all the way to that stop on foot? <laughs> it was so stupid. So he eventually finds Helena in uh, Tangiers. She's auctioning it off. This is where you get that scene from the trailer of you stole it, then you stole it, then I stole it. It's called Capitalism. That scene, we meet her sidekick, the knockoff dollar store, short round, who's called Teddy, who's just a fucking an annoyance as well as her. The two of them are thieves. He's a, like a full on pickpocket. Valor shows up, chaos ensues, and then we get the most boring chase scene. That just goes on and on. By the way, this is the thing about half of these chase scenes. They don't know how to stop them. Because they just keep going and going and going. We get the whole tuk-tuk chase scene. And it's fucking stupid and irritating. So you have them chasing Valor. Indy chasing Helena to get to Valor as well. Some billionaire's son who she banged. And then left them and stole from them hit them chasing her as well and it's just it's ridiculous ridiculous but they don't catch up to Valor he gets away and Indy knows he has to go uh, to get another part of this dial which are meant to be coordinates or something and they meet Antonio Banderas, who is fucking wasted in this movie. He's literally there for like five minutes. He's a, a Spanish frogman who brings them down. They dive, but Valor finds them again. This part is also really fucking stupid. I'm probably skipping parts of this movie, and I don't care because it's garbage. I'm just trying to get through it. They show up, kill everyone on the boat, bar Helena, uh, Antonio Banderas, yet, um, Indy, and Teddy. And Valor wants to know what the codes are and what it all says and all that type of crap. And Helena instantly betrays Indy again, gives Valor all the information for money he pays her in diamonds but she also then backstabs him by throwing dynamite she took dynamite they light it and throws it one of the Nazi fellas kicks it down into the engine room of that boat they escape by the way he kills uh, Antonio Banderas Valor kills him to try and convince Indy to tell him what he wants to know. They get off the boat and they're onto their boat. Terry, or Terry, Teddy, um, 
Helena and Indy and they take off and Helena's all like yay look what I did aren't we great and you know she's having a great time, L time and Indy's just like my good friend just was murdered and she's just like oh sorry <laughs> she says the thing was off in a place in the east I can't remember where but it's actually I think in Sicily and they go west how does Valder know this because he watches them travel off using binoculars and it's the one and only scene then when we get the map with the red line like old school indie we get that and then Valar comes up on the screen with that map and says they're not going east they're going west it's like well they literally only arrived to where they were going and the kid Te Teddy robs money off this obnoxious kid even though he's obnoxious that made fun of him to buy an ice cream and as he's turning he looks down at the dock where's the fucking boat that the Nazis were on the one that they just blew up the engine room on <laughs> it's like how the hell did Juice get there that got down quickly I, I, I don't know what it is oh my god people just keep showing up and of course they catch them in the caves uh, Indy and Helena are in the caves they find Archimedes tomb he's buried with a watch on his wrist and Helena notices the carvings on the side of the tomb it's meant to look like a phoenix but she says to Indy but the phoenix has propellers they get caught Indy gets shot in the chest how the fuck he doesn't die don't know because like he's like shot <laughs> right next to the heart and the crazy thing is half the time he looks like he's about to die and the next few times he looks like you know he's on top of the world he couldn't care like it's like he didn't get shot like this makes no sense they end up guiding planes and uh, what's his name Valor 10 plans to go back kill Hitler become the new uh, Fuhrer good for him Helena and Teddy need to try and catch up so she turns around to Teddy and sees a little plane little Cessna type plane and says to him do you think you could fly that by the way Teddy can do fucking everything he can drive he can fix things steals everything you name it little fucker can do it oh by the way in the caves they handcuffed him to the big fucking lurch dude they the two then managed to break the little bridge they're going across they fall into the water he goes to a hole in this mesh wire type thing undoes the cuffs and handcuffs the lurch dude to the gate under the water he straight up murders the dude granted he's a Nazi but <laughs> at the end it's like this kid just murdered straight up murders him doesn't seem to face him at all but she asks him do you think you could fly that plane and he goes it's a thingy blah 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 or you possibly could and she's like well do you think you could can you or not and he goes well I don't know I've never flown that type of plane and she says back you've never flown any plane it's like so why the fuck are you asking him can he fly it if you know he's never flown oh so stupid but he runs off to try and get the plane she takes off on the motorbike to catch up to the Nazi plane which some of the worst CGI she gets onto the plane by jumping onto the wheel they end up back in time Indy starts explaining to them as they're heading towards the fissure to go back in time 
that the coordinates are wrong that they're not going to I think he said 1939 I think that's the date they were trying to get back to and he's trying to explain something like don't know where we're going but it's not to there and they kind of pan and they end up going through the fissure anyway uh, Teddy yes manages to fly the fucking other plane and follows and they go back in time to the Romans attacking the Greeks yeah to which the Nazis in particular, Bright Holbrook's Nazi character opens the door and automatically starts shooting at everyone. <laughs> and you're like, why are you shooting at everyone? They all, all the Romans and Greeks and shit, think it the planes are a dragon. They're firing uh, fucking spears and everything at the planes. While the lads are just shooting at everyone. This is where time travel gets sloppy with people who don't fucking pay attention to. You, we've all heard the shit of if you go back in time and you even manage to stand on a bug. The chances are you fuck up history. Well, how is history supposed to continue properly when the Nazis just riddled the shit out of fucking tons of people? But the plane crashes, kills Valor, all the Nazis. Helena and Indy jump out of the plane with a parachute. Archimedes finds them, has a conversation. And Indy wants to stay in the past and die. He literally wants to he, like tell Helena, no, there's the coordinates. You fuck off home. I gotta stay here. And that is not Indy. Indy would do everything to protect history and everything else. And yes, you've heard the rumor, and yes, it's true. She punches him and gets him home. How she gets him home? Don't know. Or probably on the plane. But it's the case of all the medical stuff, everything else. Because he's shot. He should be fucking dead anyway. She punches him. He wakes up back in the apartment. She comes in. Uh, he says, you should have left me there. And she says, why? You, you know, you had to come back. You'd have fucked up time. And he says, would that have been a bad thing? She says, yeah, this is your time. You have to be here. And he's like, for who? And the reason he says that is because, again, Marion was divorcing him. But the son, Mutt, was killed in the Vietnam War. That's right. He, Mutt enlisted. The anti-establishment fella enlisted. And not because he wanted to fight for his country. He enlisted, and you were told this, to piss Indiana off. He enlisted in the war. To piss his dad off. And died. Because of it. And then. Teddy and. Miriam come in. And yes it is Miriam. Uh, and they do the reverse. Of the. Boat scene in Raiders. Of the where does it hurt. Here. Just that it's her point to her elbow and him kissing it. Salah, as you know, is in this movie. Fucking useless. No point in being there. He's a cab driver. He shows up, brings him to the airport. Says he wants to go on an adventure. He's told no. And then he's at the very end. For like three seconds. Where he takes everyone out for ice cream and starts singing the song he was singing in Raiders you know Easter egg callbacks ooh the fucking movie is a horrendous mess an absolute mess well done Kathleen Kennedy you've destroyed yet another fucking beloved character 
Fuck you, Disney. Fuck you, Lucasfilm. Fuck you, James Mangold, for directing this piece of shit. And fuck you, Kathleen Kennedy. I give this movie nothing out of ten. Don't see it. Don't waste your time. And with that, I will leave it there for this one. So cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.